Hello, and welcome to Simple Man Sermons, the preachings of a simple man called by God to share the good news of Jesus Christ. According to the doings of the land of Egypt, where you dwelt, you shall not do. According to the doings of the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you, you shall not do. Nor shall you walk in their ordinances. You shall observe my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk in them. I am the Lord your God. Being different from the nations. Being different from the culture and society around you. Being God's people means being set apart. That's what the word holy means, set apart. According to the doings of the lands around you, you shall not do. You are to be special. You are to be God's people, different than the world. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. And the Lord has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples who are on the face of of the earth. The verse we started with was Leviticus 18, that's Deuteronomy 14. At least you think this is only in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. Let us see the beautiful continuity. This is from 1 Peter. Yes, that Peter. Very close to the end of the Bible, to Revelation. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of darkness into marvelous light, who were once not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Again, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. Here's from the mouth of Christ Jesus himself. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. That was John 17, and if we back up to John 15, we see similarly. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. We think that this world that's so opposed to the word of God, to the truth of God, is a new thing as if we're sliding from some perfect place. I think sometimes that's how, at least I see it, and perhaps how some of us see it out there. Like, oh, you know, back in the day it would have been so much better. But we just looked at way back in the day. According to the doings of the land of Egypt you shall not do. According to the doings of the land of Canaan, where I'm bringing you, you shall not do. And God says that he didn't choose Abraham who would become and give birth to Israel through the lineage because they were the mightiest of all the people but because they were the least of all the people from Deuteronomy 7 the Lord did not set his love on you nor choose you because you were more in number than any other people for you were the least of the peoples because the Lord loves you and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage. It's a beautiful lesson in that for us I want to touch on for just a moment. Don't think that God chose you because you were so good. Negative. God chose you because He 
is so good. Not because you were better, stronger, faster, smarter, wiser, more pious, whatever. He chose you because he is good. He plucked you out of the fire, delivered you from bondage because he is mighty. Not by your own strength. At least you look back and think there was something better in you. What do you have that you did not first receive? He chose you because he is good. Because of what he is. Now, we see the world was corrupt even then. Look at the horrible things that Egypt was doing. Their polytheism, their many false garbage deities. Their worship of a man as if he was a deity, the pharaoh. And just the ones off the top of my head, it was mentioned in that one verse, the Canaanites, but also the Hivites, the Philistines, the Jebusites, the Parasites, the Amorites. Just a few that I just thought of. All these nations. All worshipping false gods, doing horrible things, abominations. Be on guard, lest you think that went away that that somehow is better today. They just put new labels on it to try and make it seem good, to make evil seem good. The same thing Satan's always been doing, but back in the day they would sacrifice their children to Moloch. Today, many sacrifice their children for the sake of convenience, called abortion, planned parenthood. Still evil, still killing your children, you think the pagan nations from days of yore were so foolish worshipping the sun and the moon and the stars and worshipping creation. You look around now. What is environmentalism if not worshipping the creation? Now don't get me wrong, I love the environment. I just did a several day stint and I do them quite frequently when I'm out west of just living out in the wilderness. I love nature. I love to hunt and fish and forage. I like wild places, but I worship the Creator. And that's what we're called to do. Don't worship the creation. Again, you think that was for some ancient pagan peoples. Look at environmentalism today. Really look into that and see if they don't worship the earth, the creation, rather than the Creator. There is no Mother Earth. That is garbage, false, pagan deity. There is only Almighty God. According to the land of Egypt where you dwelt, you shall not do. According to the land of Canaan where I am bringing you, you shall not do. How do the Ten Commandments start? I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. And stop on that one. How often today in today's culture, in today's society, do people take the Lord's name in vain? The Lord God Almighty, that's a sin. That's a sin punishable by death, taking the Lord's name in vain. The Lord is to be kept holy, set apart. Think about somebody you love the most in this world. Hopefully you can think of someone. Would you use that person's name as a curse word in vain? Would you blaspheme using that name? But people in today's culture, they'll even broadcast it, put it on TV, on the radio, on whatever, in songs. Blaspheming, using the name of the Lord God Almighty in vain. But it is written, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. We live in a guilty, sinful world. That's nothing new though. Now, you may want to turn this off if you're listening with kids. I'll leave that up to you, parents. I'm not going to say anything graphic or vulgar, but I'm going to talk about things that are going on in our culture today and things 
that the Bible talks about as far as sexuality goes. If we look around in our culture and society today, and we look at the sexual debauchery that's going on, we think maybe one of two things depending on what camp you're in. Maybe thinking, look how horrible this is. There's never been anything like it. Well, I didn't plan it this way, but rather fittingly, where we started in Leviticus 18, let's go there. These are just a few of the things talked about in Leviticus 18. Moreover, you shall not lie carnally with your neighbor's wife, nor defile yourself with her. And you shall not let any of your descendants pass through the fire to Moloch. We kind of touched on that. Nor shall you profane the name of your God, I am the Lord. You shall not lie with a man as with a woman. It is an abomination. Nor shall you mate with an animal to defile yourself with it. Nor shall any woman stand before an animal to mate with it. It is perversion. Do not defile yourself with any of these things. For by all these things the nations are defiled, which I am casting out before you. So we see here, this stuff was going on. This sexual debauchery is nothing new. It was going on then. And that other camp I talked about, the people that are in the world, they think today, oh, look at how liberated we are. Look at how much we've progressed into this sexual freedom, if you will. Well, they haven't progressed at all. As you look at all this tolerance, look at all this progression we've made, look at how far we've come in society. It's not progression, it's regression. We've regressed back into sexual debauchery when we had worked so hard to free ourselves from that in the world. We have fallen back into it and become slaves of it. It's nothing new. What we just read, that was in the Torah. That was written in Moses' lifetime after the exodus of Egypt. Meaning, this is ancient Egyptian times. And these are the things that were going on, the things that I just read. He said, by these things the nations are defiled. They were doing these abominable things. It's not progression. It's regression. It's not being set free. It's becoming a slave of sin. You're going to serve something. The Bible puts it pretty succinctly, pretty simply, pretty binary. You are to serve God and be a servant, slave of God, or you're going to be a slave of sin. Pick one. The world's pretty clearly chosen what they're picking. Calling evil things good and good things evil and becoming a slave of sin again. Regressing back into a debased, unholy culture and society. Again, it's nothing new. According to the land of Egypt, where you dwelt, you shall not do. According to the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you, you shall not do. We are to be different. We are to be set apart. How many times in the Bible does it say, Be ye holy, for I am holy? From Genesis to Revelation, how many times in there does it say, Be holy, for I am holy? Now that's a deep dive, and that would be probably its own sermon, but I just did a quick search, and things that pop up are like 30 encouraging Bible verses on being holy. Nine Bible verses about being holy. 25 Bible verses about being holy. 52 Bible verses about holiness. Anyway, case in point, many, many times we are told to be holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Throughout the entire Bible, to be set apart, to be different. A holy nation, a peculiar people. Peculiar because we're not like the world. According to the land of Egypt, where you dwelt, you shall not do. According to the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you, you shall not do. You see, they defile themselves with sin. We're called to be separate, set apart. We're called to serve God, not our own fleshly desires, not some pagan idolatry, whether that was worshiping some false sun deity in polytheism, or today, the environmentalists bowing down and worshiping Mother Earth or the environment or climate change or whatever it is. I'm not even going to get into whether that stuff is climate change is real or not. It doesn't matter if it's real or not. You don't worship it. You don't make it your God. You don't sin for the sake of climate change. We talked about sacrificing to Moloch. Whether you use the name or do it under the guise and cloak of convenience. It's still 
doing according to the nations. It's still not being set apart, not being holy. Again, it's nothing new. If we look at cultures that I really like looking into, um, the Romans, the Greeks, right? they did great things. They also did some horrible, abominable things until they became Christian. The Romans did some egregious things. They had a pantheon of false garbage deities. If you look at their sexuality, it was perverse. Again, you look around today, it's not progression, it's regression into debauchery and sin. Falling back into giving yourself up to vile passions. That's nothing new. It's not some new discovery. It's not some progression, some advancement in society. It's a regression. It's a falling back into sin. I think the culture would like to paint like the Puritans that came here with their Bible that they could read on their own and interpret literally and come here and hack away into the wilderness and stand up for what was right and what was wrong and live for God. You know, the founding of our nation. People look at that and think, oh, they were a bunch of prudes who, you know, thank goodness we've thrown off that yoke. Well, you haven't. You've traded a good light yoke for the heavy burden of sin and death. That's what we've done recently. Again, you will serve. You will serve something. Either you will serve God or you will serve sin. If you're tired of it, if you're tired of the sin of the culture, of the nastiness, of the filth of the culture, the debauchery, if you're tired of all that, tired of the weight and burden of sin, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Notice there is still a yoke. You are still to serve, but it's so much better. It's so much better to give up a life of debauchery and sin, and I speak from experience. I've put out my testimony on other episodes, but... It's so much better to live a life serving God than be a slave to sin. You are going to serve something, but you choose, and choose wisely. Don't be like the nations, whether it be ancient Egypt or modern progressive garbage theology with no real truth, with subjective truth. Truth is whatever you want it to be. Right and wrong is whatever you want it to be. Mother Earth and planned parenthood. Progressivism, which is really regressionism so-called science that is based on lies. Whatever the case is, don't be like the nations. Be set apart. Be ye holy. Because God is holy and he has called you to be his own special people, a special treasure above all the nations that are on the face of the earth. You're not called to be like them. Throughout history we see the nations going astray, but God choosing a remnant to follow him, to be true, to follow truth to live for God. If that's you, it's a better way. If you are one of the chosen few that have the blessing, again, not because you are good, but because God is good. Remember when we read Deuteronomy 7? Not because you are great or mighty, you're smart or whatever. What do you have that you did not first receive? God didn't choose Israel because they were mighty or anything. He chose them out of his own love. If you're chosen... It's not because you're good, it's because God is good. You deserve death and wrath because you are a sinner, just like me. But God chose to save us because He is good, because He is rich in mercy. If you're one of those chosen few, wash off the filth of this culture. From 2 Corinthians, Touch nothing that is unclean and I will embrace you. I will be a father to you and you will be my beloved sons and daughters, says the Lord, Yahweh, Almighty. And how about Revelation 18? For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached the heaven. 
and God has remembered her iniquities. Again I read, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. And again what we read just before that, Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And where did we start? According to the doings of the land of Egypt you shall not do, and according to the doings of the land of Canaan, where I'm bringing you, you shall not do. You're not to be like them. You're to be different, holy, better. Not because of anything in you, but because God chose you and is calling you to a better way. It's a great gift of God's grace. Unmerited, undeserved favor. Cling to it. Pursue it. It's a much better yoke. It's a much better life. Come out of her, my people. Be in the world, but not of the world. Be different. Be set apart. Be holy. With that, thanks for listening, and have a blessed day.